Come join us on Discord. We would love to talk model aircraft with you on the official Two Brothers Radio Control server. What's going on YouTube? John without the H here at Two Brothers Radio Control. Today my buddy Kieran's on camera and we're gonna be trying out a new format. So we're gonna take these planes and fly them stock. So right now I've got this plane set up. Keep your eye on the plane. Set up four full span ailerons in crazy rates. But what we're gonna do is turn all that off, fly on stock high rates, and we're gonna fly with the flapper on turned off. And we're gonna fly it the way it would normally be flown by most people to give you an experience of what it's actually like when it's not being flown to its full potential. So if you have a, a channel radio that's like maybe six channels or, or seven at most, you'd still be able to experience what this plane's like and get an idea of what we're gonna do with it. But then midway through the flight, we're gonna switch it into the high performance mode and show you what it's capable of with all those mixes and everything else done to it. Zooming on the battery tray here, got a uh, SMC 4400 lithium high voltage pack. This thing is awesome. It gets ridiculous flight times. It's one of the reasons why we're gonna just do this as a one and done flight and maybe do some B-roll stuff after to explain what else this plane's capable of. There we go. Didn't even use flaps. Don't even need them in this wind. And you can see the wind affecting it a little bit too. Not bad at all. Uh, so one of the things you're going to notice is the roll rate is severely impacted compared to the way I would normally fly these things. And it's not going to be able to tumble as easily because it does not have ailerons in the prop wash. But it does have the ability to do cool stuff still. So it's enjoyable and fun to fly. Like you can still knife edge with it. and you can still do all sorts of other crazy maneuvers with it. Let's try to get it into a knife edge. This is on high rates, 100% rates instead of 150. Battery 16.8 volt. And we are at a full LiPo charge on this high, high voltage pack under load at half throttle. Isn't that crazy? So you can still do a lot of precision flying with it. And you can still stick smash if you want. A lot of things you can do that are fun. You can also slip it in sideways with a little bit of rudder, drop it in for a quick touch and go. Flaps up. Flip it back over. Volts. So again, on the stock setup, it's still a lot of fun to fly. And if you're on a limited channel setup, like some, a lot of people are, I mean, not everybody has an IX-20 like I do. And that's to be expected, you know, it's a $2,000 radio. And I got the radio specifically to do setup videos so I could share the screen with my Android uh, tablet that's inside of the, the radio and to be able to share knowledge and info with it and show that you can do more with these models than what they're actually, you know, built for out of the box. Let's put it upside down. It's not rock solid upside down. It does have a little bit of up pressure you need to give it. But this 4400 is about the sweet spot. I think anything more is probably too heavy. There we go. Um, anything more is probably too heavy for it. But this is pretty good for a plane like it. There we go. Flip her around. Do another quick touch and go. It tracks pretty good down the runway. We do have some light variable crosswinds today. Nothing I haven't flown in before. But it's a fun challenge to fly in. I'm enjoying it. And your stick smashing is still something I love to do with this thing. Uh, but wait till we see, see what else we can do with it when we get to the four minute timer when I'm really gonna unload. We're at three minutes, 50 seconds. So we're gonna do the whole show me what you got routine pretty soon. Three minutes. But I kind of like the way it's flying right now at 100% rates with a little bit of expo and a little bit of wind and some dude out there on the runway with a scooter, it seems. Great way to get yourself killed if somebody comes in and lands today. That's why, uh, if you hear that static earlier, that was a, uh, an aviation radio. We're flying at a air, full-scale airport. One of the requirements for us by the pilots here was that we did have an aviation radio, just in case of uh, anybody coming in so we can get out of their way and not interfere with manned aviation. One of those major rules from the FAA. I'm on baby 
stabilize in this wind, would you? Thank you. All right, we're at three minutes, 45 seconds. Pretty soon we're gonna unload it into the crazy mode. But I mean, with some of the flying you've seen me doing, it's almost like kind of hard to believe it's not in crazy mode, but it's really not. It's just 100% rates with ailerons only. All right, 150% rates, flapperons enabled. Here we go, look at the roll right now. Now we're gonna do one of my favorite things with this plane is we're gonna put it into a quick tumble. Check it out, buddy, here we go. That's the kind of stuff this thing is really capable of. Insanity how fast this thing can tumble and spin, isn't it? What do you think, Eron? You got some words of wisdom over there for me? Not so much. I'm surprised you can maintain orientation. Yeah, uh, when it when it gets crazy, it's uh, it's fun. You just get used to the stick orientation and what the plane's doing after a while. So the, the Commander is very capable of docile flight. It's also capable of crazy aerobatics. One thing it really doesn't do is hover. That's one of the reasons why we're not even trying it right now. Uh, the reason being, it just doesn't. The motor's not powerful enough. The plan form doesn't like it. And, you know, on top of that, it's just, it can be kind of difficult to kind of recover from. So best to not do it at all. High speed pass in here. Let's go upstairs and put it into a blender. Bring it on down. Straight vertical. So you can do a lot of 3D maneuvers with it. Nothing really preventing you from doing that. It's just kind of weird to get into and out of at times. Just something to be aware of. But it's very stable even in these winds that are kind of turbulent. Not too horrible, but they are still a little turbulent. Let's put it in another one of those tumbles I love to do. Three, two, one. It carries energy through that maneuver so well. It's like remarkably cool. I love it. How many minutes have we been flying so far? Six minutes, 35 seconds. And we have how much power left? 15.4 volts, and that's still a little bit of load. Not half bad. So the Commander is a good intermediate pilot plane, I would say. It does have a little bit of adverse yaw to be aware of if you don't have the uh, flapperons enabled. Even with them, there's still a little bit of adverse yaw. You can kind of see it when I do the rolls there. But if I turn it off, see how much how much more the nose kind of like goes out when you roll. So just something to be aware of when you fly it. A little bit of rudder smashing there, kept it in the same orientation all through that tumble. Uh, overall, it's a really good plane. A lot of fun to fly. I don't need to give this a score. I've already done it in the past. I'm just kind of showing you guys you know, here's, here's a kind of a format that we want to keep doing, which is showcasing what these models can do uh, when they're in stock form and what they can do when they're in modified form. And modifying is something I'm always going to do to these planes because that is the basis of this channel. But I want to show that you guys can do a lot of this cool stuff too. And you don't have to have a super crazy transmitter if you don't need one. I mean, a lot of the stuff can be done without it. So it's not like you can't do this with an NX-6 or a Tyrannus or whatever it is you're flying. Free Sky, all those radios. All this can be done on the lower end radios. You don't have to have the highest, craziest, most expensive radio to fly one of these planes. You can do it with almost anything. Uh, you just have to have the channel count to be able to at least operate the control surfaces, right? You don't want to use a four channel radio with a plane like this because it requires five. You need one for the uh, all the flight controls, and then you need one for the flaps. 
If you have six channels, you can run the flaps as ailerons, or you can run the ailerons independently and use them for crow. I love that maneuver so much, it's so cool. This thing is so much fun to fly. I'm actually kind of regretting the idea of giving it away to Kieran here pretty soon, but I know he wants to fly one. And I've gotten most of my use out of it, so this will probably be the last time we see it on the channel unless he brings it over to fly. Nine minutes of flight. I think we're good at pretty much calling it quits here. So let's go ahead and bring it in. Maybe do some final thoughts and some additional potential B-roll footage on it. And then we'll finish it up. Come on, baby. Line up. Line up. There we go. The Commander is a super stable airframe. Takeoff rolls are easy whether you're on pavement or you're on grass. Even in wind, it tends to track pretty well and handles great. The integrated AS3X gyro system does a fantastic job of keeping the airframe stable throughout any maneuver that you put it through. Speaking of maneuvers, it's really capable overall. While inverted flight does require some stick pressure due to the plan form and battery placement which basically always makes this model nose heavy, it still tracks well and isn't sluggish in the sky. Knife Edge is one area where the Commander really shines. It's one of the few models that we actually dial back the rates to 100% for when attempting this maneuver. At 150% it just feels weird and pulls away, and it requires back elevator pressure to keep it tracking straight. At 100% it tends to track true and doesn't have any negative characteristics. Keep this in mind if you're planning to emulate the setup that we've used in the past. Kiron and I put in some serious practice time to get better at drone chasing so we can continue to offer this unique viewpoint of these beautiful machines. The more we do it, the better the chase footage gets. Expect to see more of this going forward if this is something that you actually enjoy. The Commander is capable of other maneuvers too, like that tumbling we performed earlier which looks entirely different from the drone's point of view. So what else does it perform besides inverted flight? or knife edge, or tumbles. It's also capable of some pretty decent flat spins too. This is something that Kiron and I have been working on together for a while, since this is the hardest thing for him to track while we're flying together. While it's true that it doesn't flat spin as well as other models that we own, it's still a respectable show. If you're the kind of pilot looking for a lazy Sunday flyer, this one also fits the bill. It'll cruise along happily. A 4000 class pack like our SMC 4400 high voltage battery will let you putt around in the sky for no less than 15 minutes if you'd like. But here at Two Brothers Radio Control, our shtick is aerobatics and getting the most that we can out of these models. However you choose to fly, we think that you'll enjoy the Commander. If you haven't looked at it yet, but you like what you see, consider picking it up from the links in the description. It's a huge help to us at no additional cost to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time with a new upload.